away from the MVM Dome in Budapest. And it's the quasi home side, Jur, who get us underway, attacking from left to right on your screens in the all green Vipers in their changed kit of light pink and black defending on the right hand side. And it is, in fact, a backcourt trio of right handers. So Veronica Christiansen does get to start. It is Oftedal in the centre, and it is Meta Hansen in the left back position. Chris Janssen goes one way, then the other. She broke free from Gildan, but not after. The referees blew the whistle. Vipers trying to step out of the six-meter area and force some uh, dodgy passes here early on. Chris Janssen lays that one off, has to be recycled. Ball across, two off the dial, shot blocked down by Debelic, and it's a big block as well. Which sends the ball over the halfway line. Hand up for passive play, so shot has to come in here soon. Ball into the line is cut out. And a chance for Vipers to break. Looks like Jure have transitioned well in defense, so they'll start from the start. Ball across. Oh, broken through immediately. And there's your first goal of the game. Kind of out of nowhere. And it's who I mentioned could be the Achilles heel for Jure. Bella Gildan, she has been over the years. And, well, not one to take on shots usually out of nowhere. But there, was happy to burst through the defense. Much to the chagrin of Ambrose Martin. Gildan gets the scoring underway. Line switch with Blom laying it off and Chris Janssen breaking through there. Going across the shooting arm. Uh, breaking clean through to make it 1-1. One, one. Um, Vipers can now settle down in the attack. Nordemer will go into her favourite right back position. A little hug with Sina Oftedal. So many of these players know each other so, so well. Usually playing together in big finals for Norway. Now facing each other. Gildan over to Yarabkova. Back to Gildan. Cuts across. Yarabkova. Standing shot and well. Picking up where she left off yesterday. Marketa Yarabkova. And on the other end, Anna Meta Hansen flies through. And both defenses looking a little bit leaky here in the opening couple of minutes. Both teams going out at full throttle. And that's a nice little nerve settler for Hansen, who can be a real confidence player in attack. Always will give everything at both ends of the court, but her shooting very much depends on how the early shots go for her. But Opkova lays it off to Gildan. Nedlikova coming in from the right wing, making a path out there for Merck. Back to Merck. Nora Merck, and that's saved by Lenord. First big stop of the day for her. Hansen across to Christiansen, out to the wing. A bit of space there for the shot, but it's saved by Katrina Lunda. First opportunity for Victoria Lukac, denied. And that's going to be an important battle as well. Well, I say denied, denied by the post. The angle I saw, difficult to tell whether it was a save from Lunda. It was being too kind, but she still had to make the move to force that shot wide. Around comes Anderson from the left wing, receives it, lays it off to Merck. Going at it again, another save for Amandine Lenord. Ball taken over the halfway line by Stina Oftedal. Drifts out to the left and earns a penalty. High challenge and a yellow card given to Anna de Belic. What will hurt more there is the penalty given away. And the arm slipped off one player and on to Oftedal. And two decent shooting opportunities for Nora Merck there, but both shots at a, a nice height for the keeper to save. Now Veronica Christiansen with the penalty. And fires that one past Andrea Osmo Pedersen to give Jure the lead for the first time today. Celebrations for every single goal, showing just how pumped these players are, just how crucial every single battle in this game is going to be. 
Yorapkova. The Mert ball into the line is a great one and a brilliant save, but a penalty called by the German referees. A little tug on the jersey there on Anna Debelic by Lindblom. Let's look at that again. A real fired in pass in between two defenders. Great vision by Merck. The combination between her and Debelic has been wonderful all season long. Now the penalty by Gul'dan. Oh well. Taking the penalties as well. Is she looking to repeat that 15 goal haul of six years ago? I think not, but interesting to see that she is taking on shooting responsibility so early. Uh, nice that she's able to build some confidence in it as well. Off the doll. Hansen. And that one tipped onto the crossbar. Rebound picked up by Blom. And that's a good finish off the rebound as well. Right inside that left hand post. Shot well tipped onto the crossbar in the first place by Lunda. And Lim Blom, you can see, looking for the pass in the first place. Quickest to react and no stopping that one. Ball to Merck. Wing switch with Nedlikova back into Merck. Good movement here, and Anderson came sneaking in. Referee said no penalty, just a free throw in the end for the rebound that was picked up. Seemed a bit harsh on son of Anderson. She looked frustrated with that as well. A bit of contact, but not enough in the referee's eyes. Not a bad thing, though, to see the referees allow a bit of heavy hitting. Line switch with Devilich. And this time the shot from Yorapkova locked down. And they would have been uh, watching the highlights of the whole game, I'm sure, from yesterday. And knowing that standing shot from Yorapkova was so successful in the semi final. Hand up for passive plague. Ball out to the right wing. Nedlikova makes no mistake. Only needs a little bit of space, the former Jer player. Put away her first goal of the game. And the left wing down the other side. And that's a good response. First of the day for Nadine Schatzel. Teams trading goals for fun at the moment. And that passes the poor one. And a chance here for Jer to break. Picked up by Christiansen. Little one, two. And put away by Victoria Lukacs. And it's mistakes like that. Which Vipers cannot afford to make today. A simple mistake, a little slip out of the hands of Yorapkova. But it gives Jir a two goal lead for the first time today. Gildem. Yorapkova. Cut inside, ball into the line is no good, but the referees bail the Belich and Murk out with a free throw. Go for the line switch again. Quick pass out to the wing. Smart thinking. And the Jura defense a little bit of sleep there. And for the second time in very quick succession, Zen Lakova scores. That pass uh, slips out of the hands of Anna Meta Hansen. Again, good swarming transition defense from Jura. They're not allowing Vipers to break easily here. Merck. Gildan. Really good stuff again, and space on the right, but an attacking foul this time, Cole, against Vipers. And that was unfortunate. Major uh, with the opportunity to break on the second wave. Or will it all go all alone? Of course she will. Dina oh. Oftedal going in where it hurts over and over again. Nice breakthrough. Nice finish, 7-5. Seen off that all so crucial for this team functioning the way it should. And this weekend, she is not disappointing. Yorapkova lays it off as Anderson comes in from the left wing. Goes in as a second line player. Back across the Merck. She's looking for the gap on the far side. Knocks that one onto the post. Difficult shot for her. Did well to actually get any shot away in the first place. 
Vipers fans looking for the two minute suspension, but I don't think so. Around comes Tendlikova, sneaking in there. That's the second line player, then trying to cro cause some kind of commotion and create some space. Ball across to Merck. Oh, nice stuff off the crossbar with the lob, though. Oh, it's unfortunate. What a move by Northern Merck. And Jure, quick as a flash down the other end. And Steen off the ball. Gets hauled down. Bit of a heavy challenge, but just a free throw given. I'm pretty sure any contact with the head will not be appreciated today. Not that it's appreciated any other day, but I have a feeling, in particular today, I'd want to avoid contact with the nose. Empty switch. But Hansen <laughs> didn't read the playbook there. Just saw the gap and went for it. And Anna Meta Hansen is looking full of confidence and full of smiles as she fires in goal number two. Such a fascinating shooting arm. So unlike any other player. And when it's flowing, it's so, so good and difficult to stop as well. Chapchet comes in on the line. A bit of a change there, early doors. That's a nice pass inside. A solid finish as well. Lisa Chapchet makes it 8-6. Uh, almost lost there by Jure in the attack. That was a nice move. Good movement off the ball in the first place. And a solid finish. Delight among the Vipers. Friends and family and fans. 11 minutes 30 played already. This is flying by Jure with a narrow lead. Looking just a little bit more confident here in the opening quarter. Hansen, this time, shot is tipped onto the crossbar again. Last time the rebound was picked up by Blom. Kuntea cannot do it. This time around, Queen of Kuntea. Just out of reach. And the left hand side, Anderson saved down low by Lenord. Dürr pushed down the left hand side, tries to keep the ball moving. Gildan comes away with the steal, but not before the referees blow the whistle. There's a save onto the crossbar at the other end, down low. Not a bad idea to go for the near post, but well covered by the French keeper. Off the doll, and held up. Ball into the line is a good one, and put away by Krina Pintea. Merck, Gildan, back inside to Gildan, who decides to slow things down. This game being played at an incredible pace so far, which I think will suit Jur just a little bit better. And it's showing in the scoreboard so far. Still early days. Gerotkova breaks through. That's going to be a penalty. Good breakthrough. And showing that she has so many different weapons. As she did yesterday. Her 12 goals came from a variety of positions and a variety of moves as well. Uh, Bella Gildan will take the penalty again. But this time against a different French goalkeeper. Laura Glauzer coming on. Her first action of the day. Only faced one penalty yesterday. Facing the second one today. But cannot stop Gildan. Goal number three for Bella. Bella Gildan, he'll be moving to Lugi Lund next season. And unlikely to be seeing her in the HF Champions League for a while in that case. And moving for family reasons, for special reasons. Now it's a bit of a farewell for her. That ball from Ryu was an ambitious one. Almost stolen, but it works out an absolute treat in the end. Ryu yun sets up that goal down to the right-hand side. And it's Lukac who makes it 10-7. No foul on this occasion. And a chance on the break here. Lukac again almost loses it. And he gets herself a free throw in the end. That's good coverage in defense by Nordermerk. Uh, Anna 
Mehmet Hansen given a break there. Ryu Yunhee coming in in the right back position. Veronica Christiansen moves into the left. Ryu lays it off to Pintea. In comes Oftedal into the center. Stina Oftedal takes on Tamori. Ryu, and that shot wide to the right. Half of the crowd celebrating there momentarily. They thought it went in, but it was on the wrong side of the net. Gilden across the Yerapkova, right into the hands of the keeper, but inside defending, and a penalty. Chatzel asking, was it her? It was you, Nadine. Well inside the six-meter area. Now for penalty number three. Amandine Lenord stays in between the posts. It'll be a fascinating battle developing between her and Gildan. Gildan wins this one again. Four from eight goals scored for Vipers by Bella Gildan. And she's given a rest now. I think well deserved as well. She'll be back very shortly, I'm sure. And Marta Tomac likely to come in and has come in in defense and will play in the center of that attack as well. Lukac lays it off to Oftedal. Ryu in the center to Christiansen. Chapchet very active in the center of that defense. That ball almost stolen, batted away, and in the end, the referee say it came off the foot of a Jura player. Ambros Martin is complaining, but the referee seemed to have a good eye on it and good defending there by Vipers. Let's look at it again. Tipped onto the foot of Prina Pintea. Good defending from Marta Tomac, who's just come in. See if she can deliver in the attack as well. Chapchet on the line switch. Yerapkova to the right in the center and saved e easily enough by Lenord. Christiansen plays it out to the wing. Not a great angle and a clear save as well. Lunda and Lenor delivering the goods in between the posts for their respective teams so far. There's an overlap on the right-hand side. This one is put away. No mistake. Oriana Knedlikova, goal number three for her. Really delivering. Another former Jura player. Just about finding a way past. Nice pass across by Marta Tomac. And with that, Vipers back within one. They were three down moments ago. They've refound their footing in this game. Oh, good stuff. Well, too many steps in the end taken by Oftedal. Looked brilliant to me at first glance, but what do I know? Merck goes down the left-hand side. Ball across. And a free throw given. Oftedal still asking what exactly happened there. Ball behind the back. That's excellently done. And put away. Really difficult situation as well. For Sonova Anderson, she had to land in between two defenders on the ground. And that was clearly on her mind. You can see the way she jumped as well, but kept her composure. Look at that. Went for the near post in the end. Really good finish and then managed to not land on anyone. Excellent stuff from Anderson. Very impressive goal, her first of the day. Ryu, that saved fairly comfortably, but a free throw given. Vipers level now, three goals in a row for them. And as you can see, four and a half minutes since Jir last scored. Can Ryu change that or Ryu loses the ball there? Referee say cleanly. Chapchet lays it off to Tomac. A chance for them to break now, but it's good transition defense again from Jir. Second wave perhaps. Can Merck do anything? Lays it off to Anderson. Wasn't the best pass, has to be recycled. Tomac. Looking for an option, and is held up well by Veronica Christiansen in the center of defense. But the attack, all of a sudden, not firing in all cylinders for Jura. And Merck asking too much to calm things down here a little bit. Line switch on the way with Chapchet. Verapkova comes into the center, waiting for it. Merck decides to go alone, lays it off eventually. Still no hand for passive play, ball into the line, and there's a penalty. And they went route one in the end. They took their sweet time, just as Nora Merck asked them to, and in the end, it delivers a penalty. 
Nice switch of the hands by Yarabkova to set up the assist. And once again, a change in the goal. And it's goal number, goalkeeper number three. Already, Verdure, Silvius Olberg. The Norwegian international who knows all the Norwegians very well facing Bella Gildan. The Swede steps back on her line to face Gildan. Off the post, off. Oh. The first time one of these goalkeeper switches pays dividends. Uh, Solberg doesn't get a touch on it, but did enough to force Gildan wide. Uh, the ball crashes off the post. Tension rising. Almost 20 minutes on the clock here. Ryu plays it off to Anna Mera Hansen. And his attacker foul. Wow, no goal. There was an attacker foul by the line player. I'd love to see the replay of that. It was the right decision, a brilliant call, but I certainly didn't see it up here. I was too focused on Hansen. So, yeah, you can see that left arm of Brina Pintea holding back the defender illegally. Good call. Mert tries to go alone. And just a free throw given. He was looking for the penalty. A little smile between Ofterdal and Mert. Booze ring around the MVM dome. You can see Ofterdal was inside as she was looking for the attacker foul. Chapchet. Tomac. Back to Mer. Ball out to Anderson. Doesn't fancy it all. It's a heavy challenge. And the referees are just give a free throw. Hand up for passive play. Shot's going to have to come in here. Who's going to take it? Tomac. Held up. Oh, great pass inside. Really good stuff. Held up the entire time as Jana Knedlikova snuck in, ghosted in behind the defense. This will give a nice angle, just sneaks in there, perfect timing for the pass. The goal, four in a row for Vipers, timeout for Jared. Martin not losing the head, all very practical instructions there. All focused on defense as well. Little things that we should be able to fix, but little things that have led to this glut of goals for Vipers as they've turned a 10 7 deficit into an 11 10 lead. Roger rings around the arena as it has done so often this weekend. Off the doll, breaks through, a good save down low by Katrina Lunda. Uh, she's in the mood. It looks like she might have hurt herself a little bit. Well, maybe that was just a little grimace, I don't know. It's okay if things hurt. She is 42 after all. Incredible athlete, incredible athlete. And no sign of her finishing anytime soon. Over eight minutes now. We can consider this a goal drive. Jared how much they held up well but I don't think she minds that at all get up go back to Merck not the greatest pass hand up for pass of play again Merck get up Kova standing shot into the bottom left hand corner the Viper is up by two Just a free throw given there. Nothing more. Hansen looking for the penalty there. Great angle for this goal. Right into the bottom left-hand corner. 
There's only one spot he could put that to beat the keeper. And a keeper like Amandine Lenaud. Look at this. Estelle and Zeminko into the backcourt in attack. It's been a while coming this weekend. Great to see. Here she is in the center. And Zeminko to Hansen. Ryu waiting in the right-back position. She's got the space, looking for the in-flight pass, but it's cut out. And a chance now on the left-hand side. Sonova Anderson to make it a three-goal game. And that's exactly what she does. Six goals on the trot. The Vipers, Chris Janssen, second of the day for Anderson. And you can see what they were trying to do. And Zeminko going for the in-flight shot. But it was cut out. Hansen, Ryu, Enziminko breaks through between one and two and earns the penalty and a desperately needed penalty as well for this team who are close to ten minutes without a goal now. Good block by Lukacs. Just created enough space in between the two Czech players for Enziminko to burst through and get the penalty. And to take it, and it's Anna Meta Hansen against Katrina Lunda. Hansen fires that one into the bottom right hand corner in off the post. And the goal drought is over. Jared back within two. Nice finish. No stopping that one. And I just love to see these replays of Anna Meta Hansen. Uh, Pure jubilation and anger and everything involved. The intensity in her face during these games. Amazing to see. And amazing to see is the shooting of Marketa Yarovkova. What a performance she's having this weekend. 12 goals yesterday, three so far today, and a big smile on her face with Yana Knedlikova. Just sends the keeper the wrong way. And Vipers, three to the good again as we edge towards the final five minutes of this first half. If you've just joined us, where on earth have you been? It's the final of the EHF Final Four 2022. Jer trailing at the moment against the reigning champions, Vipers, Christian Sand. And they have possession at the moment, winning the free throw taken by Blom. And Zeminko trying to get this team flowing again. Hansen cuts down the left-hand side. We see, we're waiting to receive the ball again from Enziminko. They set up down the left again. Hansen. Enziminko cuts inside one way, then the other. Tries to find the line. The referees eventually call for the free throw. Good defending down that right-hand side by Vipers yet again. Great concentration in the defense from the Norwegian side. Hand up for passive play. Ball out to Ryu. And Zeminko with the shot. Oh, does it stay out? It does stay out. Katrina Lunda is a ball magnet at the moment. Nice pass inside. And well, who else is a ball magnet? Amandine Lenord. Nice save down low against Chapchet. Chris Janssen could have gone down the right hand side there. Decided to cut inside instead. She's come in for Ryu and a two minute suspension. And there haven't been many of these so far today. Marta Tomac gets that one for a bit of a cheap shove in the end. Let's look at it again. Yeah, that was really unnecessary. The ball was gone. There's the save. Good idea to shoot between the keeper's legs. And this is the one that just about stayed out. Great reaction there from Katrina Lunda. What a final so far. And Zeminko. Ryu comes back in. Chris Janssen in the left-back position. Ryu for the extra woman. Oh, she's left it behind. Well, oh, the ball got stuck in the ground. It's not happening for her so far today. He's going to stay on. But bouncing around the center of that court, and you can see that's just one of those things. It just got stuck to the ground, too much resin there. And these things piling up on you as a player, and it'll dent the confidence as Jared and defense go to a 5 1. 
with Anzaminko out in the top. Gildan tries to spin past her. Takes a tumble to take a few more seconds off the clock. And deciding not to risk playing 6v6 and taking the keeper out. Lunda goes back in. They're playing a woman down. The space here for Gildan has blocked down. A chance for now. Jared to break. And the right-hand side, great pass over to Lindblom. Puts it away, makes it a two-goal game. For an our trademark celebration. Gildan, quite ambitious there from nine metres, a good block down, and a great pass by Veronica Christiansen, cross-court. Puts Viper's lead down to two. And with that, Oli Ekstad decides to take his first time out of the day. Setting out their stall for the next attack and for the rest of the half, and very conscious. Conscious of the fact there's just over two minutes left in this first half. The saving percentage from both sides 35%. Back underway with no goalkeeper at home, so they do have to be careful of the ball here. Ball across. Anderson leaves it behind because it's a turnover. I think a player drifted inside the six meter area. Still no goalkeeper back. Eventually comes back, and the shot is over the crossbar. Oh no! And Katrina Lunda goes down heavily as well. He focuses on the shot that went over. She came rushing back to her line. I'm not sure if she crashed into something. She's up on her feet, looking a little bit shaken. Let's look at it again. It was an empty net. And yeah, oh, smacked, the, smacked her head off the post. And she went down. Well, thankfully not her head, but her hip still. That's got to hurt. And good to see that she's up on her feet again. Absolute hero. Katrina Lunda, and a bit of a disaster there for Jurt. as they had an empty net to shoot into for a while there. And now the two-minute suspension is over and hasn't really punished Vipers at all. But Yerabkova cuts inside, lays it off, but it's picked up by Enziminko. Fast break down the left-hand side, but Enziminko decides to go alone. And she did that all herself. DIY handball from Estelle Enziminko earns the steal, lays off the pass, gets it back again and decides, well, I'm taking this all the way. Great vision to come across there and snatch the ball just before Merck can get her hands onto it. And no stopping her from there. One goal game. Almost stolen again, but Irabkova bolts the one in. But no goal. That was exactly what the call was there. It looked pretty clear to me. I wasn't. Uh, that's why they have two referees. And there's only one of me up here. <laughs> Into the final minute now of this first half, and a chance for Jared to draw a level. And Zeminko gets it back from Christiansen. Off it all back in. Ball across. Great breakthrough. Oh, the save. Lunda again. Point blank save from Veronica Christiansen. And so Vipers now will have the last possession of this first half if they control the tempo. 
Rafkova may have had that last goal stricken off, but chances will be that she'll get another shot here if she's in the right position. Here she is, tries to beat the defender, spins around, passes across to nobody in the end. There's 10 seconds left, they're going to have to get going here. Referees call for the clock to be stopped. With seven seconds remaining, so the floor can be swept up. Replay of that amazing save, really point blank stop there, Katrina Lunda. She said she needed to perform this weekend. A lot of hopes lying on her in the goalkeeper position, and she is delivering. Tomac, Berg, time running out, Merck's broken through, squeezes that one between the legs just before the buzzer. And the Jura players asking for steps, but Merck somehow snuck through just before, uh, squeezed that one between the legs of the keeper. And it looks like actually the Referees are going to check the video replay to ensure that it was a goal. Looked pretty good to me in terms of scoring before that buzzer. It doesn't harm to check in these situations when you have the technology. And the Vipers players already making their way off court. Only Ole Ekstad waiting to see, but there's nothing they can do about it now. The referees have come to a decision. And they have decided that it is indeed a goal. A little thumbs up there from the table. And with that, we have our half-time score. Here at the team that have so often come here has been making some stunning saves at the other end. These two legendary goalkeepers great to see them face off one last time. Here it is, seven saves for Leno, 33%. Very decent, though I reckon we may see a switch up between the posts. And yeah, that confirms it because the tracksuit top is on for Amundine. The tracksuit top is off for the Norwegian Silvia Solberg. So she'll be facing many of her, her international teammates. Anna Meta Hansen, one of the top performers, the captain of the club, who are today. Three goals for her so far. And Marketa Yarapkova with three goals as well. She's been fantastic. Yannick Nedlikova has been fantastic. Bella Gulden has been fantastic. The final goal of the first half scored by Nora Merck, who has the potential to be fantastic in this second half, which is just about to get underway. It's Chris O'Reilly here with you for the final of the AHF Champions League Women 2021. 22 season and it's Vipers in attack at the start of this second half with a two goal lead and Nordemar in the center at the moment empty switch will bring Gildan in and Chapchet in on the line she's done well since coming in and the first goal of the second half well of course this weekend it can only come from one person Marketa Yerapkova she had a goal chalked off for a reason I'm still not sure about at the end of the first half, but no such misfortune this time around. Just gets that arm free and bounces it past Solberg. So Vipers extend their lead to three, which is the largest it has been today. Hansen, immediate response, leading by example, Anna Meta Hansen. No time for the defence or London to react to that catapult of a shot. Still then. Get up, Kova. Lays it across to Merck, who finds herself not where she wants to be on the left-hand side of the court. So they slow things down, set up all over again. And they'll go again. Empty switch. Simple formula, brings Gildan into the centre, just trying to take some time off the clock, settle into this second half. Irapkova goes again, this time the shot is a bit too high. Ball over to Christiansen, back into Ofterdal, little one-two between the two Norwegians, against the Norwegian side, and it's a Norwegian, Veronica Christiansen, who pops up with another one. Today she's been so good in going into these one-on-one -on -one battles and coming through the defender as well. Pure power, and then the composure for the finish to bring Jur back within one. 
after only two minutes of this second half. Merck into the line, maybe could have gone along, but it's stolen. And all the way, coast to coast, Dean off the all, and we're level. Well, that's a Norwegian fair, whichever way you want to look at it. Two Norwegian goals, but for the girls in green. And Stina Bredal off the all. Comes away with the ball and goes all the way from nine meters to nine meters. Makes it 16-16. This time Irapkova comes into the center. Lays it off to Gildan. Tries to put a bit of pace on the ball. Mer looking for the line. Comes off the foot of the defender and a free throw given. Hansen happy with that. Seems happy with everything she's doing at the moment. And every right to be. Anderson. Mert, hand up for passive play, standing shot again. Um, I don't know how they keep standing off her, but Marketa Yarabkova punishes them yet again. Goal number five today. In the form of her life this weekend in Budapest. And they said before the game, they needed a performance from her or a similar performance from somebody else again today. And so far, she's delivering. And that's why they lead at the moment. Nice spin, and the shot is wide to the right, though. Not sure that Chris Janssen got her bearings before she took that shot. Merck cuts inside. Gildan lays it off. Oh, it's smart moving again. And Jana Knedlikova, not for the first time today, ghosting in and punishing a lackadaisical Jura defense. Off the doll. Has been running things nicely in the center of this attack. Took a bit of a break towards the end of the first half, but is back in marshalling this Jura side again. And this, at the moment, based on form, is the best Jura backcourt with Hansen on the left hand side, Chris Janssen on the right hand side, off the doll in the center. And Anna Hansen yet again fires one in. And it's a battle between the left backs at the moment. Anna Meta Hansen on one side, Marketa Yerovkova on the other. And now, as soon as I say that, another one brought in, and it's Marketa. I didn't expect at the start of this weekend I'd be saying her name quite so often. And in such glowing terms as well. Goal number six, ball inside is no good. A chance for Vipers to break, but they decide to slow things down. Two goal lead back in hand. Gildan out to the right hand side to Norda Merck. And she decides to go alone this time, and Merck fires it in for the first time in this second half. Oh well, Vipers full of confidence again, just as it looked like Jura were taking hold, as they did in the semi final yesterday. Vipers strike back. And this final is really delivering over and over again. And we haven't seen her take on too many shots from the outside. And there she just felt the defense was a bit asleep. Anna Meta Hansen, meanwhile, takes a shot which every time she's gone for the top right hand corner, Katrina Lunda has been more than equal to it. That's the third time she's saved from one of those shots. An important save as well for Vipers. Chapchet on the line switch, and it's almost out of the just out of the reach of Oftedal. Almost snatched away there. Gildan into the line. That's going to be a penalty if it's not a goal, but it is a goal. And Lisa Chapchet, well, he's a bit of a revelation in this final. This time Chris Janssen can't spin free. Held up well by Gildan. Oftedal dishes out to the right. Plenty of space on the wing there, and that's a good finish by Victoria Lukacs. Good control by Oftedal. And a much needed goal on the wing as well. We have to be impressed by Vipers and the way that they managed to control the game here. They're not off put by any sudden increases in form or fortune that Jura had at the beginning 
of this second half and during the first half as well. Ball into the line, almost stolen, picked up, and it's picked up by Chapchet. It was so well to wrestle that out of the hands of two defenders. Tomac has come in for Gul'dan. And this time the shot at the near post by Yarabkova. And it's well covered. An important save for Solberg as well. Off it all into the line, picked up, but free throw given. And a two-minute suspension on top of that. Keita Yarabkova. Gets her first suspension, and well, a deserved two-minute break, but not the one she would have wanted. Holding on to the back there. So a chance now for Jura with a one-woman advantage to cut the deficit further. Hansen, oh, great pass back, and a penalty given after the shot goes straight into Katrina Lunda's head. But pushed off balance there, off the doll after that. Sweet little one-two between her and Hansen. And now it's Lindblom who will take the penalty. Katrina Lunda decides to step out to four meters to face Blom and the lob. Oh, just goes in off the underside of the crossbar. Oh, gorgeous finish from the Swede. Takes a lot of nerve. To put away a penalty like that, particularly from a line player, but no, oh, she had all the nerve in the world. Just sneaks in under the crossbar. <laughs> I wonder how confident she was as that one floated through the air. All behind the back to Merck, she goes down, just about holds on to the ball to get the free throw. Looking a little bit of a discomfort there, but. Back up on her feet. And Vipers need to be careful here. No goalkeeper at home as they look to play 6 v 6. Jer stepping out here, trying to force the turnover. Well, that's a nice pass in to Anderson. Well, really good stuff. Uh, sort of Anderson, just like we've seen from Pendakova sneaking in there and really not being paid attention to. It seems to be a bit of a weakness in the Jura defense, but no weakness in the Jura attack at the moment. They're back on flying form. We've seen Oftedal again at the center of almost everything good they've done today. And Ragnil Dahl, who's come in during the suspension. Nothing she could do about it. Belich comes back in on the line. Still a few seconds left on the suspension, but Lunder will come back in a moment. Dahl, back to Merck. Merck into the line, and penalty called. Bit of a simple penalty to give away, but Marta Tomac was in the right place. Veronica Christiansen asking why. Just a little shove, but enough to convince the referees to give the seven-meter throw. It was Gulden taking all the penalties in the first half until she hit the post. Now it's Norda Merck who doesn't wait around. Waiting for nobody there, not even the keeper. It looked like Solberg was caught off guard there. Goal number three in the night. <laughs> uh, good stuff, Nora. Three goal lead maintained after that suspension, so they've done well, really, Vipers. That ball spilled out of the hands of Hansen. Tamori lays it off to Tomac. Merck happy to slow things down. No need to rush if you're a Vipers player at the moment. Tomac has a look around for an outlet and lays it off to Dahl. Ragnil Dahl, who scored three goals in the final last year, has had an outstanding season. But has played second fiddle this weekend to Yarabkova. Her chance now to impress Anderson. Merck to Dahl. He's got the arm to shoot. And it's blocked down and picked up by Solberg. Chance on the 
left hand side here. But good defending in transition from Vipers. The ball in is just about picked up by Karina Pintea. Uh, Marta Tomac goes down heavily and stays down as well. Looks like a smack in the head for Marta Tomac. Hopefully, she's okay. Thankfully, back up on her feet. Uh, I think it was a shoulder of Pintea that crashed into her. And there was the block from Pintea moments before. Anxious faces among the majority of the crowd here. And what a crowd it is as well. Exactly what you want to see and what we all believe this sport deserves. Off the doll. Drifts out to the right. Ryu gets caught and good defending there by Dahl. Off the doll. To Ryu again. Ryu finds a way through this time and gets her first goal of the game. And great for her personally that she's able to come back in in the second half, put her first half woes behind her. Nice movement there, cuts inside through the legs of the keeper who was waiting at the near post. Goal number one for the Korean international today. Goal number 21 for Dürer. There. Like a bit of pass behind the back to Chapchet doesn't quite work out, so a free throw given. Gildan back in in the center of attack. Gets it back from Merck, but it wasn't on the move, so has to keep the ball moving by hand. Passive play warning is up by the referees, so not many passes left. They need a shot here soon. Gildan, Merck, looks to go high, Nora Merck. Well, it hasn't worked for, for much of the game, but in this second half, starting to find her range. Ball out to the left wing to Schatzel. Nadine Schatzel with an immediate response. And a change in between the posts for Dieu as Laura Glauser comes in. Blauser, who was voted by you, the fans, as the all-star goalkeeper of this season. Now getting her chance to shine in the final. Meanwhile, free throw given as Susanna Tamori, in a rare moment in attack, gets hauled down. She's coming at left back. Gildan in the center, giving the instructions for the line switch. Around comes the Belich. Ball back in. Oh, really nicely worked. And that combination of Nora Merck and Anna de Belic working a treat yet again. We haven't seen it too much today. But they really do have a brilliant understanding. And with that, a timeout call by Ambrose Martin. His side trailing by three. over 16 minutes left in this contest and the time has really flown by and not in the favour of Dürer. They came back really quickly at the start of the second half, drew level at 16-16, but you have to credit Vipers. They managed to find another gear and managed to stay on top in this contest, which is no mean feat. Ryu, pass across, 
to Grintea. She tries to wriggle her way through and gets a bit of a soft penalty in the end. It was the right decision. Nonetheless, Gildan coming in across. And it is going to be she who won it will take it. Rina Pintea. They really uh, mix up the penalty takers here at Giro, don't they? And Pintea stepping out to about eight meters. It makes no difference. She rockets that one in. Sends the keeper the wrong way. And the majority of this 15,400 crowd, which is a brand new record. For the for women's club handball was in raptures. Then with a bit of booing as they uh, didn't like the fact that Gildan was arguing that Quintea moved her foot. Not a bad call. You have to see the replay there. Tamori still in at left back. Receives it on the wraparound. Gildan in the centre. Back out to Tamori. Broke through. And the first goal of the game for Susanna Tamori. Oh, they're all contributing now. Another former Dior player looking to come back and haunt her former team on the biggest of stages. We're into the final quarter now. Three goal game. And Dior knocking and knocking on the door, but unable to break them down. Ball across, a stolen, great steal by Sonova Anderson. Managed to stay out of the six-meter area as well. What a weekend she's had. The only recognized left wing in the squad. And she has performed above expectations, I reckon. Tamori. Wrap around with Chap Chat and in comes Gildan to the center. Gildan bounces at nine meters, lays it off to Merck into the Belich, who's in a real fight. Free throw given. And the Vipers living on the edge here, playing 7v6, but they know what they're doing. The last thing they want is a couple of empty net goals to be shot into means they have to be really careful on the ball here. Go down in the center. Switch again. Two line players in there. Oh, Gildan gets the ball back, but she was already on the way home. Tamori behind the back, but nobody's there, and the keeper has to get back here quickly. Ball over to Hansen. Chris Janssen in the left-back position. One-two between the two of them. Anna Meta Hansen. Ryu. Ryu Yunhan with a brilliant pass inside, and a touch from Lunda, but not enough to keep out Prina Pintea. And I think Vipers at the other end can be called a bit over-egging the pudding there. One pass too many, not really using the 7v6 advantage, just kind of getting in a bit of a fuss about it. Here's the line switch again with Debelic. Moves it off to Merck. Gildan. Somebody wants to take on the shot here. Merck decides to go. That's going to be a penalty, is it not? It is indeed. A foul from Estelle Enziminko. Bit of hesitation there on the breakthrough. But had the advantage. And yeah, it was clearly an act of shooting. As Enziminko took her arm. So Merck earns the penalty. Gildan to take the penalty. She missed one already, doesn't miss this one. Three goal lead restored for Vipers. Number five today for the Swede. Nice finish against Klauser. And the way things are going. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Amandine Lenord come out for one last hurrah. Ryu held up well, and this Vipers defense, so full of confidence at the moment, making the right moves. The one player who's really a thorn in their side is the woman on the ball at the moment. Off the doll. Nice pass to Ryu. 
And Ryu Yun-hee gets goal number two of the day. And it's the same formula. Oh, second half long, really. Two goals between the sides, and three goals, two goals, three goals. Trading goals for fun here, but most importantly, Piper's maintaining their lead. Will then. Tamori looking to break through. Oh, well, she looked a bit lost there for a moment, but Susanna Tamori knows to find a way to the goal. And Jur with a huge let off there because they literally threw the ball into the hands of Katrina Lunda, but the referee says they took the throw off in the wrong place. And they get the ball back. So that was a bit unconventional there, Susanna, but got the job done. 28-25, pressure building on the five-time champions. So they need to find a way back. Off the doll, lays it off to Hansen, great breakthrough into the top right-hand corner. Anna Meta Hansen delivering over and over again. A brilliant combination between her and Off the doll. Makes the initial movement, draws the defender. And Hansen lasers one into the top corner. And it continues. Tamori, Gildan, heavy challenge by Enziminko, looking to wrap her up early, but I still don't think they mind that too much. Merck, ball in, Debelic, finished. A combination again, Anna Debelic, and the shot is tipped out. Oh, brilliant stuff from Katrina Lunda. Goes hurtling into the LED boards. Tips that ball away. Let's look at the replay of that, please. Brilliant stuff. 42 years of age, flying back in between her posts. Well, she won't thank Ole Ekstad for making her run in and out over and over again. But goodness me, it's working a charm. The Belich on the line switch again. Gildan. Tamori. Gildan. And Zeminko comes out. Wraps her up again, but, you know, I'm not sure it's doing too much. Tamori, hand up for passive play. Merck has some space, but lobs it right into the hands of the keeper. There's an empty net to shoot into. No, not anymore! She saves it outside of the nine-meter area. What is going on here? <laughs> Katrina Lunda. <laughs> what do you call that, an act of defense? Does that even count as a save? I don't know. First of all, the lob shot, no good. Glauzer doesn't fancy the shot herself, lays it over to Pintea, but look who's there. Outside of her six-meter area. <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. The legend grows. Tomasz comes in, overlap down the right-hand side, saved again by Glauzer. Goalkeeper not back yet, but she is back now. Off to Dahl. Ball into the line to Blom. This time it's put away. And it remains in that two to three goal margin, despite everything we've just seen. May have been able to go alone there, Murk. Good finish by Blum. Down the other end and a timeout for Ole Ekstad. Well, it's been unconventional how Vipers are doing this, but they're doing it. And that's been the case all weekend long. Can they hold out? Seven and a half minutes left. Superwoman on your screen there. No doubt about it. Saving percentage 
is not looking amazing at this point, but the kinds of saves she's making is phenomenal. Laura Gloser, two saves in a row now. She's come into the game at the right time. And come into form, it seems, at the right time. Seven and a half minutes left on the clock. Tomac receives it from Merck and held up by Ryu in the center of defense. Still playing 7v6 here, Vipers. Pass across to Merck. Tomac tries to wriggle free, ball into the line. They have to keep fighting here. A free throw given after all of that. And a two minute suspension on top of it. And it's Ryu, you and me. Gets her marching orders. See again, over aggressive. As soon as the match had gotten past her, she needed to let go. Held on just a little bit too long. And now Vipers can afford to bring Katrina Lunda back in and play 6v5 in attack. A bit more space to play with as well. Going to be two line players, two backcourt players. Gildan across the Merck. Behind the back is option there, the wing. Goes back to Gildan. Hand up for passive play. Debelic almost loses it, picks it up again herself. Gets a free throw. Jura fans on their feet, calling for passive play and a turnover. Almost lost it there, but Hansen tipping it back into the Belich's hands. And then decides, look, I'll just go for it. Oh, these replays are amazing. The tension palpable here. And as I said, a new record for women's club handball. 15,400 in attendance today. An amazing attendance and exactly the audience these two teams and this occasion deserves and these two teams are delivering for this occasion so far six and a half minutes left now two goals between the sides and you feel vipers really need a goal here from somewhere it's been a while merck lays it into the line good pass good finish and lisa chapchet delivering yet again Hansen, off the doll, runs into traffic and bounced into the top left-hand corner by Estelle Enziminko. Quick response from Jura, as we've seen so often today. Vipers toiling, battling their way to every goal. And so often, Jura just come down the other end and respond, but they haven't responded enough. So 45 seconds left on the suspension. Chap Chet, yet again, the outlet. And a penalty this time. Inside defending by Enzimiko. Clear to see from the replay. Well spotted by the referees. And Bella Gildan makes no mistake again. What a performance. Bella Gildan, maybe not known as the shooter she once was, but she's shooting mighty fine today. That one into the bottom left-hand corner. And so many players in this team you can trust with responsibility like that. And Gildan, definitely one of them. Uh, she's proving. And another timeout for Ambrose Martin. And his final timeout, in fact. And it's come quite early.
those final words from Anna Meta Hansen says it all. But they find themselves in trouble here, Jared. And they drew level. 16-16 at the start of this second half. But they've been chasing ever since. They've been knocking. They've been huffing and puffing on that defensive door, but they haven't knocked it down yet. And Zeminko finds a way through again. Two goals in a row from that right back position. Makes it a two goal game again as we creep into the final five minutes of normal time. And I see down to my left that uh, the stage for the podium is being rolled out. Will it be needed? Yes. Still too difficult to know. Anderson lays it off to Merck. Oh, oh, this somehow goes in, off to the post, and it's Yerevkova again. With a standing shot that'll be made famous by this weekend. Ball into the line is no good, and the referees bail the juror out there with a late call for the free throw. Would have easily been nothing. And if so, son of Anderson was away on the fast break. Marketa Yarakova has made this EHF Final Four her own. That standing shot again, sending the, keep, the keeper the wrong way, bouncing it in off the post and the crossbar, just over the line. Off the all, back to Hansen, out to the wing, Schatzel, saved! And well, that looked like a mile away was going to be saved by Katrina Lunda. That's just the aura she has about her at this moment. Save number 11 today. And just look at the way she tracked that arm and made it look almost easy in the end. It's not easy. And Zeminko out on the top of the 5-1 defense again. Anderson goes in as a second line. Ball across the mud. Gildan. Looks for some space, wrapped up by two players. Free throw given. The Vipers can now afford to try and take precious seconds off the clock. And I did say it earlier, Amadine Leno would have one last hurrah. Here she is. The two goalkeeping legends face to face. Gildan, there's one way, then the other lays it off to Yerubkova. Ball down, ball into the line is no good, free throw given. This will suit Vipers down to the ground. Six passes left, according to Gildan. So they have the full length of this passive play warning. Belic, Gildan, Merck, Merck looks to go alone, ball behind the back into the wing, Anderson will go for it, saved, Lenord, and away goes Oftedal, down the right-hand side, Enziminko, saved, Katrina Lunda, rebound picked up, and yet another big stop from the living legend of this sport. And that's what it's all about, these two keepers delivering save after save here in the crunch time. And those pictures speak for themselves. Two and a half minutes left, three goals. Vipers have to play with. Ball into the line, can they make it four? They can. Anna De Belic puts this game on the edge. Another save, and that, I may just say it now, with two minutes and ten seconds left. That may be that. That trophy is staying in Christian Sand. Barring an absolute catastrophe here for Vipers. What a performance. What a performance. Yerabkova. Gulden. Gulden looks for the outlet. Yerabkova down the right-hand side. She looks to go through alone. 
She's happy to earn the free throw. And take a few more precious seconds off the clock. They all know it now. Hand up for passive play. Gildan. Now to Merck. Off the top of the crossbar. And Leno will try to push things here. Stranger things have happened, but this would be the strangest of them all. They need a shot here. Off the doll. Ball out to the wing is a good one. Open shot from the wing, and it's put away by Victoria Lukas. 33-30 with one minute left. And the juror not even stepping out to try and intercept here. They know it's done. Vipers Christian Sand. And they're going to retain the title. A club which at the beginning of Katrina Lunda's career were playing in the third tier of Norwegian handball. Here in the autumn of her career, or the winter of her career, who knows? is going to win the title for the second time in a row. When she joined this club, she said, the last thing I would have dreamt of is of winning the HF Champions League. They're about to do it two times in a row. A nice lofty in-flight pass was really onto nothing, but it doesn't matter now. They're celebrating already. And there's 17 seconds left on the clock. Jur, like troopers, keep pushing here. That'll be the final goal of the game. Katrina Lunda isn't even going to pick up the ball because you know what? They've done it again. Vipers Christiansand are the champions of the EHF Champions League 2021-2022 season. They've conquered the EHF Final Four for the second year in a row.